Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are looking at three creative projects that you guys have built and shared it on our platform. So let's go ahead and look at the top three projects that you have shared. So the first one, we will go down and by the way, this is the Computer Vision Zone community. It's a new Facebook group. You can join, uh, I believe we started maybe two, three days ago. So you can share your projects and let us know what exactly you're building and share because this was something that I was really looking forward to. A lot of people, they comment and they have uh, a lot of different projects that they built, but I am not able to see what they are building. So it is very nice to see what you guys built. So this is the first one by Yusuf Abdurrahman. So we are going to open that up. So let's go and look at it from the beginning. So here we can see that this is a seven segment display and I believe he is uh, parsing it and looking at each of these digits one by one and then classifying whether it's uh, one, two, three, four and which digit it is. And he's plotting that in real time using, uh, I guess, mo matplotlib. But uh, matplotlib is not that great for plotting, to be honest, uh, especially when it's live plotting. But overall, the project is really good. Uh, it is something that is quite useful because these old methods or these old screens, they are uh, hard to automate sometimes. So you can just put a camera in front of it and it can give you the numbers. So if you're not familiar with seven segment displays, they are basically LED lights. And at the back, they are connected to a resistor for the limiting of the current. And then they are connected to kind of a switch, which you can control with a microcontroller. So you can turn them on and off at different times to uh, give that illusion of a digit. But you cannot use it for ABC or alphabets uh, or um, anything special characters or anything like that. It is very hard to display. But for numbers, it is great. You can use it for a football stadium or anything that is big and large and people want to see it from far away. Uh, seven segment displays are the perfect use of that. So uh, I, I really like this project. It is very good. I'm not sure if he's using uh, any contour detection or he's uh, getting these regions or he's using machine learning. Uh, it, it looks like machine learning because uh, there is a percentage of how much percentage does it think that uh, it has the probability of being two, the probability of being six. So probably it's machine learning or a direct end-to-end -end approach with uh, what you call deep learning. But here, what you can do is you can uh, change this a little bit. I remember that when I started my YouTube channel, I created this video. Let me find it. Uh, it was about uh, plotting as well. I used Arduino and OpenCV and it was really fast and it was real time. So let me see if I can find that. So yeah, so this is uh, the idea. You can see it's plotting using OpenCV and it is quite fast and it is real time. So it will happen really, really fast. And uh, you might have also seen my recent project uh, with the Telodrone and we are plotting with the PID parameters. And you can see that is really fast as well. Uh, you can plot uh, three plots at the same time, X, Y, and Z, and you can tune the parameters at the same time. So I would highly recommend, uh, I have added this functionality in the CV zone package. So if you want to use it, you can go ahead and use it from there. Uh, it just requires one or two lines of code and you can plot anything that you want. So a very good project by Yusuf. So let's go ahead and check out the second one. The second one was somewhere here. Yeah, this. So it is by Hamza Nawaz. Now, what he is doing is he is taking this image, a screenshot of all these uh, attendees, and then he's converting that into an Excel sheet. He is checking the numbers and he's putting whether they were present or not. So right now, all of them, they show present. So all of them are P, but he's showing that you can get it using an image. So I can see that he has used a Jupyter notebook to actually write the code, but he didn't really share what exactly is the backend, how is it working. He mentioned that it is using machine learning, but again, he didn't mention more about that. So if you are watching Hamza, do share what exactly did you use? And it is it looks like a great project and maybe you can automate it, you can make it real time and we can see it live. And you can also connect this to a database. Uh, 
Uh, you can use Firebase. I have used that in one of the attendance projects. It is extremely simple to add that uh, to Firebase. Maybe I will add that in the CV zone package as well, that you can just type in what you want to send and it will send the commands to the Firebase uh, database and you can save it in real time because Firebase has the functionality of real time. It can be used for delivery, uh, what do you call the apps as well. When the rider is coming to you, you can see in real time where is the driver. So you can use that with Firebase. So yeah, that's a great project. But again, if you share more information, please share a video, share a GitHub page or something like that. So we can see what exactly are you using at the backend. So the final project we have here is by Vinu, Vinutha Unam. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. It's a little bit hard, but uh, yeah. So let's check out what she has done. This is a great project, not only because it has functionality, but it also has a graphical interface. I love when people add graphical interfaces. So here you can see that this is a rock, paper, scissor game, and you have a button where you can start the game, then it is showing on the side. It's not just writing, you have uh, an open hand or a closed hand or a scissor. It's actually telling you with the images, which is very interactive and very intuitive. And not only that, you can see at the bottom, she also has added um, a ratio of how many times did you win and how many times did the robot win. So that is really amazing. And it is a very good and practical use of um, what do you call the media pipe library. And of course you can use the CV zone package, which is a wrapper for this uh, to run it very quickly. So you can do that too. Now, one thing that I wish that you could add this later on to this project is the PNG images. Right now I can see she has used JPEGs and they have these white backgrounds. So that looks a little bit weird. I would not say it is completely weird. But I, I have not added this functionality yet in the CV zone package, but I do plan to do that because having PNG images just makes it so much better. Uh, and what I'm planning to do is to add a functionality, add a function that you just put in the image and you give in the location and it will put the PNG image on the, on the background as well. So that will open up a lot of possibilities in terms of graphical interface, in terms of making it user friendly. So other than that, I really like this project. So these were the three top projects that you guys have shared on the Computer Vision Zone Facebook group. And I hope to see that more of you will share and I will create more videos of uh, what kind of different projects you are building. And one more thing, which is kind of a secret until now, it's confidential. We are actually releasing a contest for Computer Vision in which you will be able to participate and win different prizes. So all you have to do is you have to download the video and you have to process it in a way that uh, it is mentioned in the rules. And whoever does it best, they will be able to vote and they will be able to uh, get a prize. There will be top three positions, top five positions. They will get prizes shipped to them uh, directly. If it's a software based prize, they will get access to the thing. So a lot of exciting stuff is going to happen. So do subscribe and do check out the Computer Vision Zone. I will be sharing all the details here and on the website. So this is it for today's video. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe and I will see you in the next video.